Okay, uh, Math 158. This is section 1.4, linear regression. In the previous video, we talked about um, linear functions. How do I find the equation of a line given two points? How do I model a function given two points? Okay. In this case, um, in section 1.4, we're going to look at what's called linear regression. In other words, I'm not confident that the best graph to represent the data points I have is a line. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. But how do I find the equation of a line? If I'm giving multiple points rather than just two points. So if you look at um, the example I have here and the notes 1.4 linear regression, suppose that we're conducting research for a company that's interested in expanding into Mexico. Of interest to us would be current and projected per capita gross domestic product of Mexico 2000 2014. The table shows the data that was collected. So in the year 2000, that's two zero two year uh, zero years after 2000. Two would be the year 2002, four would be the year 2004, and so on. So the year 14 is actually 14 years after 2000 would be the year 2014. So we're looking at the per capita income. Now you'll notice that the per capita income is nine. Now this is per capita, not for the country GDP, per person. $9,000, two years later, it's still $9,000, 10, 11, 11, 12, 13, 13. So you notice it's not a perfect linear increase. We don't have the exact same amount of increase each year, okay? This would be an increase of zero, one, one, zero. Of course, I also wonder if um, maybe it's not a full $1,000. You know, like what if it's going up $600 So some years it registers, some years it doesn't. Regardless, we don't have two data points, uh, two points that we're trying to find the equation line. We actually have eight data points. Find the line that best fits that data. And here's, here's a term that's called the line of best fit. We want to find the line that best fits that data. Okay. And I've got to kind of talk through this because one thing we could do, I suppose, is we could take just the first point and just the last point and say, let's find a line that goes through those two points. And, and I take the first and last because I want two points that are, are fairly spread out. And I say, I want to find the line that goes through those two specific points. And that would be a decent estimate. If I was going to do this by hand, and I use the, the, the method that we used in the previous section, which I'm not going to repeat here, but if I use that previous method, um, given the two points, 0, 9, and 14, 13, I could use those two points to estimate the line that would be the line of best fit, okay? Um, there's some specific values that we're going to want that doing this by hand won't give us. One of those is called R, the correlation coefficient. Determine whether a linear equation is actually good for that model or not, okay? Um, Using the regression model to predict, we could use that, but it's only going to be as good a prediction as, as the model is, okay? So I don't want to do this by hand since I have eight data points. So this is going to be a lesson where we're going to use the graphing calculator quite a bit, okay? This is probably a lesson where we'll actually be a benefit doing this by video rather than only watching me in class, um, especially depending on your calculator comfort. You can back the video up. You can pause. You can try it again. Um, sometimes when I when I do a how to, how do I do this? Right. Recently, I was practicing how to do something in Blackboard. Right. So um, I've got two screens going. I've got one where I've got the video. Uh, it was actually a YouTube video showing me how to do this in Blackboard. And on the other screen, I have my Blackboard class open. OK, the presenter in the video takes a step. I do that step. She takes another step. I do that step. Wait a minute. You got a little ahead of me. Pause the video. I catch up. Wait, I missed something. Back it up. You have that opportunity um, to do that here, so feel free um, to do that. Okay. Um, while I'm mentioning this, I also think it's it, and I've not said this a little bit. Um, what I'm doing in Blackboard is I'm posting not just this video, but also this note guide that I work through. Okay. Um, a blank copy of the note guide. I don't think it would be a bad idea, quite honestly, for you to download the blank note guide and take notes off of this video onto your blank note guide as if you were in class, okay? And then these are the notes that you can use so that you don't always have to back all the way back up to the video. Where did he say this? You can kind of follow along in your own note guide, 
Okay, so I, I do recommend that. All right, so what are the steps that we're going to need to do? Okay, first we're going to plot the data, determine whether the data appears to be linear or not. If the data appears to be linear, we're going to use the regression formula to calculate the line of best fit. Okay, this, by the way, is the formula. I don't want to drag you through that. If I'm teaching a statistics level course where we're doing a lot of these things, I will drag you through that. But that's a lot of formula that I don't want to do. And that's one reason why we have developed um, these things called calculators, computers, and other thing, um, devices that we use. Which, by the way, warning means it becomes a lot more interpretive. Can you interpret the results? Can you use the calculator? Can you use a technology to do what you need to do? But then also, can you interpret the results? Um, I've got a couple of sermons that I preach because I don't really teach math. I more preach it. Um, a couple of life lessons that I give and say, if you're going to rely on the technology, you really want to know how to use the technology. Okay, so so please don't be afraid of the graphing calculator. Make sure that you're practicing with it so that you feel comfortable with it. Okay, so here's some definitions. Okay, and, and, and by the way, we're going to use the magic of the TI-84 in this case, but I still need to know some of these things. The line of best fit. The line of best fit is the line that best fits the data. It doesn't mean it's a line of good fit. It doesn't mean it's a line of perfect fit. It's the line of best fit. Who's the best baseball player we have in our classroom? Doesn't mean that person's a good baseball player, right? Um, you're. I'm sorry for all the sports analogies, but you know you're you're a, a football team and you're trying to figure out who's the best person we have. <coughs> excuse me. Who's the best person we have to kick field goals? And your field goal kicker's been really struggling. You're like, who's the best guy we have? Doesn't mean that they're really good, but who's best at it, better than anyone else. So we're looking for the line of best fit. What line fits this data better than any other line? Now, let me draw you a little picture here. What we're going to do is gonna, we're going to wind up with a set of data points that might look like this. And we want to look for the line that best fits that data. There's not going to be a line that goes through all those data points. Let me do this with, with um, fewer data points. Um, let's just suppose we've got these data points, and we want to find the line that best fits that data. It may be that this line is the best fit for that data. Is it a good fit? I don't know, but it might be that that line fits the data better than any other line. So there's a line of best fit. Now I want to compare the terms observed value, predicted value. Okay, let's say we're going to talk about this value of x. For this value of x, the observed value is right there. That value of y would be the observed value. That's what we observed. If X is two, we observe that Y is five. Okay. The predicted value would be the value that's predicted by the equation. That would mean by predicted value. This Y value would be my predicted value. Let's just hypothetically say that this Y value is three. This Y value is five. And this x value was 10, uh, was 2. So our observed value might be that when x is 2, we would observe the y value to be 5. But we would predict that if x is 2, the y value would be 3 based on the regression equation. So for this value of x, this value here is our observed. But this value on the regression equation would be expected. Okay, for this value of x, observed, expected. Okay, for this value of x, observed, expected. Does that make sense? The observed value is the value that you observe for y for a given value of x. The expected value or the predicted value is the value that's predicted based on the regression equation. 
The residual is the difference between, <coughs> excuse me, the residual is the difference between those observed values. Okay. Um, the sum of squares is a term that is not necessary for this course. Basically, what that is, is it's a measure of take this distance. Each of those residuals, each of those red distances, square them and add them up. Your line of best fit would be the line that has the smallest sum of those squares. All of that for this course, you only need to know is that we are using what's called the least squares method. So you might see the least squares. That's the method that we're using. Okay. The correlation coefficient R is simply a measure of how close to linear is this data. If R is equal to 1, then that data is perfectly linear, then every single data point lies right smack on a line. That would be a perfect line of best fit, a perfect regression. If my data is spread out, kind of like in this picture up here, um, my R value might be like 0.8 or 0.5. As that R value gets closer and closer to zero, the data becomes more and more spread out. Okay, so R is going to measure how strongly correlated the data is. The closer the R value is to one, the more tightly lined up the data points are. Okay, um, slope, right? If the line has positive slope, okay, then R would be positive. If R is positive, the line would have positive slope. If the line has a negative slope, the R value would be negative, okay? And again, the closer that R is to one or to negative one, the more tightly the data points are on the line, the more closely they are to linear. One, if it's a tight positive correlation, negative one if it's a tight negative correlation. Okay. The closer that the R value is to zero, the weaker the variation of the data points, the weaker the correlation is, the more spread out the data points are. Okay. So let's get down to some nitty gritty. And I actually think that because the amount of space this takes up on a page, I've got, I think, two examples. We're going to go right back to Mexico, GDP of Mexico. Suppose that we're conducting research for a company that's interested in expanding into Mexico and of interest to us would be current and projected per capita gross domestic product of Mexico. We have the data 2000 through 2014. 2000, 2002, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 2014. Okay. Find the regression equation. What we're going to do. Okay. Now follow me with this. I'm going to do this on the calculator. These are the steps that you may want to back up. Watch, rewatch, back up, watch, rewatch, okay? Do along with me. Stat. What we're doing is a statistical calculation, something that comes from the study of statistics. Stat. We want to select the edit, so just press enter for edit. Now, what we're going to do, you should see your L1 and L2. Now, be careful you don't mess up your calculator, okay? You might be coming to office hours, hey, I messed up my calculator. What did I do? Okay, you want to be very careful here. I've got data in my L1 and L2, okay? If I want to eliminate, there's a little bit of calculator lesson here. If I want to, to take that data, if I want to clear that data out, I have two choices. I could either, right here, see my cursor's on the zero, where I can cursor up and I can cursor down. I could press delete on each cell and it will delete the data from that cell. Now, if I want to do the whole list at one time, if I go up to L2, and if I hit delete, I'm not deleting the data. I'm actually deleting the list. So you'll notice that L2 disappeared. And this is probably the most common thing that people bring me, um, talk to me about when they bring me their calculator. And they say, oh, no, I messed up my calculator. My L2 is missing. What did I do with my L2? You deleted your L2. Oh, no, I need to put it back. Okay. How do you undo delete? To undo delete, you insert. Notice that delete button, the second function up there is ins, I-N-S, insert, second, insert. 
Now, you'll notice here on the on the one, two, three, four, five, six button in blue, it says L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, and L6. You want to insert L2. So you're going to hit the second button that's blue, L2, press enter, and your L2 came back. And notice, all you actually did was delete L2 from the screen. You deleted L2 from the display. You did not delete it from the calculator. Okay, so your data is still there. So again, if you want to get rid of the data, you have this choice. Go here, press delete, press delete, press delete. If you want to clear the data out of the list, up here, you're going to actually press clear. Now notice, when I'm here, at the bottom says L2 cell 1 is 0 0.02559999999. Up here, just L2 equals each one of those data points. When I press clear, notice that clears everything from L2, and it now says L2 is blank, and when I press enter, L2 is blank. Oh, wait, no, wait, I want that data back. How do I undo? Um, the calculator does not have an undo feature, so there is no undo, okay? Now, let's suppose, though, that there was data in here, and I say, okay, I need to enter 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. I need to enter those X values. You can just type right on top, 0, 2, 4, and it will replace them. So either, either of those ways, but I'm going to put in all my X values in L1, okay, and I'm going to put all my Y values in L2. And what you should notice is you've got the point 0, 9. 4, 10, 10, 12, 14, 13, and those all correspond with the points here, okay? So there's my data. I really want to see a scatter plot. I, I want to see where would those data be on a scatter plot, right? And that's a pretty ugly scatter plot, but where would those data points be? And I can graph that. Here's what I'm going to do. See here where it says stat plot and got the Y equals button? Stat plot, that's blue again. Second stat plot, your calculator can do up to three statistical plots. I'm going to choose plot one. Notice it's off because the off is darkened. Cursor is blinking on the on. I'm going to press on. I've turned it on. That first graph is a scatter plot. Everything else are other things, not for this course, other things, scatter plot. And the calculator has a default setting. X list is L1, Y list is L2. That's what we did. We put our X values into the first list and our Y values into the second list. Mark here is just when the calculator plots the points, do you want it to use boxes for each point? Do you want it to use pluses for each point? Or do you want it to use tiny little dots? You can do whatever you want. In my experience, I have found that the boxes are a little bit too big. I have found that the dots are a little bit too small. My experience is that the pluses are just right. I choose the pluses. You can use whatever you want. Okay, so let's look at the scatter plot now. However, if I just press graph, oops, I have a domain mismatch. There's a problem. Okay. Um, let me check my calculator. Oh, yep. Where did this piece of data come from? Let's get that out of there. I try to press graph again, and there's my graph, and I'm not going to see anything. I wonder why. Well, remember that you've got a default window that normally goes from negative 10 to 10 on the x-axis and negative 10 to 10 on the y-axis. Now, I might see the point 0, 0.09 and 2.9, but I probably wouldn't see anything else. If I press window, I see the settings on my calculator. I was doing something else with my calculator, so this is a little messed up. You see the zoom button? If you press zoom, there are some preset zooms, okay? Zoom six, that's standard. If you press six, this is a standard window. Now if I press window again, notice my X's are going from negative 10 to 10. My Y values go from negative 10 to 10. Okay, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. One, so I'm going from negative 10 to 10 on both the x and the y axis. And so here's the point 0, 9, 2, 9, 4, 10. Like I said, I can start to see those. But really, my y axis and my x axis both actually need to be bigger, bigger than that. Here's a little trick. Here's a little secret. If I'm going to use technology, I really want to understand the technology. When I go back to this zoom menu and I see these preset windows, Zoom standard is one that we will use a lot in this course. Zoom stats. Remember I told you we press stat, put the data in stats. We're doing a stat plot. This is actually kind of comes out of the study of statistics. Zoom stat. So I want zoom stat. You can either cursor down to the nine and press enter, or you can simply press the nine button. And if I do a zoom stat, that resets my window, resets my X axis to incorporate all of these X values. It also resets my Y axis to incorporate all of these Y values. So I like that feature in the graphing calculator. So now on the calculator, I'm looking at these data points. Do they really, does that appear linear? And it doesn't really appear perfectly linear to me, but it does seem to be increasing pretty close to linear, okay? There's a scatter plot. You're going to need to be able to do that. We still haven't found the regression equation. We still have not found the line of best fit. Here's how I'm going to do that again. Press stat one more time. Calc. We want to calculate the linear regression. Calc. Look at number four. Linear regression, AX plus B. Linear regression, AX plus B. I want to select number four. Okay. Now I'm hoping you have a calculator that's that's newer like mine and this is the menu that we're seeing. The calculator is just going to remind us the x values are in L1, the y values are in L2, my frequency list, you want that blank. So make sure that that's blank. I pressed clear to make that blank. Store reg EQ, I'll come back to that in a moment. Calculate, I press enter. Y equals 0.32, B equals 8.75. So Y is equal to 0.32 X plus 8.75. That's my regression equation. That's my line of best fit. Again, stat, right? Edit to make sure that I've got my data points in here correctly. Stat again. Calculate number four, the line of best fit. X values are in L1, Y values are in L2. Calculate 0.32X plus 0.8.75. That means, according to the model, in year zero, I would expect a gross domestic product of $8.75,000. Notice my predicted 8.75 is different from the observed 9. Okay. If I put in 8.32x times 8, 0.32 times 8 plus 8.75, I would 11.31. My predicted value of x is 8 would be 11.31, but the observed is 11. There's the difference in the observed and the expected. Okay. Now, a couple of adjustments we want to make here. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that most of you, when you did that linear regression, your screen looks something like this. If you if yours also says R equals and R squared equals, you're good. If yours looks exactly like mine, you want to go through these steps. You want to go to mode, and this is really fun. You want to go right down here. See where it says stat diagnostics. My statistical diagnostics are off. I want to turn them on, so I press enter. Leave them on. Never turn them off. Leave them on. If you don't turn them off, they'll stay on. Okay, they'll only change either when you manually change this or if you reset your calculator. Don't reset your calculator. Second so quit. Now, if I redo stat 
calc, number four, my linear regression, and I hit calculate, notice I get my R and my R squared. Ignore the R squared, but notice we have an R value, whoops, we have an R value of 0.982. Find the R value, it's 0.982, and interpret. Since that R value is very close to 1, since that R value is very close to 1, then yes, we can use a linear model to represent this data. So C, determine whether a linear equation is a good model for the data. Yes, it is a good model. It's good enough for now. It's a good enough model since the R value is very close to one, okay? The data is very close to linear. One last thing I wanna do here, notice when we graph, we just still see the scatter plot. One more time here, if I, if I wanna say, I wanna graph this line, I wanna put this line on here, I've got a choice. I can go Y equals and type in 0.32, x plus 8.75 and now when i graph not only do i see my scatter plot i also see that line of good fit or best fit and notice that line of best fit is pretty darn good you can always write it down and retype it in but stat calc okay number four again see this store reg eq that reg EQ stands for regression equation. Do you want to store the regression equation somewhere? I'm going to hit alpha F4. See alpha F4, and then this menu comes up. I can select number one, Y1. Now, when I calculate my regression equation, 0 0.32, 8.75, notice the calculator stored that regression equation unrounded stored that regression equation into Y1, and when I pe press graph, now I have a better representation because it's unrounded, okay? Now, use the regression model to predict the GDP of Mexico in 2020. Well, in 2020, X would equal 20, right? Because X is the number of years since 2000. X is the number of years since 2000. So. In 2020, X would be 20. So what I want to do is F of X was equal to 0.32 X plus 8.75, right? Do I have that right? 0.32. So F of 20 is 0.32 times 20 plus 8.75. 0.32 times Twenty plus eight point seven five. I would expect that the year twenty twenty, the GDP of Mexico would be fifteen point one five thousand dollars. Okay. Now, a little bit better way to do that. Remember, graph. We have that regression equation. Okay. See this button right here it says calc in blue. Second, calc number one value. Oh, x equals. What do we say? X equals. X equals 20, so let's put 20 in for X. Oh boy, why is that not gonna work? Oh, I, I know why it's not gonna work, because if I go back to window, my X max is only going up to 15.4, so my graph is only showing me up to the year 2015. Let's just make that 25, or 22. It still looks similar, except it's been pushed over. Notice my graph has been pushed over because my screen, I'm not going from 0 to 20 or 15. I'm going from 0 to 22. Now, if I put in the value when x is 20, 15.178. Why is it 15.18? 15.178, 15.18 instead of 15.15. Well, the reason for that is because the calculator is using 0.32142857 for my slope, we only use 0.32. So you have a little bit of variation, which depending on which way you do it is, is okay, as long as on an assessment, as long as on a test, I know whether you use the calculator or not.
So when you when you do the test, please make sure that you indicate what it is that you're doing on the calculator using linear regression. Okay, um, you don't have to give me all the steps. Please don't list out for me all the steps. All right, so let's do another one. Oh, remember talking about Amazon the other day? The following table shows some annual reviews and billions of dollars earned by Amazon for 2004 through 2014. Find the regression equation, find the line of best fit, find and interpret the R value, determine whether a linear equation is a good model for the data, and then use that to predict Amazon's revenue in 2020. Same, if you look at A, B, C, D here on page four, it's exactly the same as in the previous example. It's just all that's changed is the data, okay? Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let X represent the number of years since the year 2000. You could let X represent the number of years since 2004 if you would like. I'm gonna to choose to let X represent the number of years since 2000. The reason I would do that is only to keep things simple. That way, in the year 2004, X would be four. In the year 2020, X would be 20. As opposed to, if X is the number of years since 2004, and in the year 2020, X would be 16. I mean, mathematically, it doesn't matter. You'll get the exact same value for 2020, assuming you do everything else correctly. Um, just for that simplicity, I'm going to choose to let X start with four. X is going to represent the number of years since 2000. So, stat, edit. I'm going to change my X values. Since I have fewer pieces of data going in than I already have in the lists, I'm going to clear each list. Oops, clear the list, press enter. I need to go up onto the L2, press the clear, enter. My X values now are four, six, eight, 10, 12, and 14. Missed, 14. My Y values are seven, 11, 19, 34, 61, and 89. Okay, remember I had that problem on the last problem with um, I inadvertently had an extra data point, so I got an error message that there was a problem in my dimensions. You do want to make sure that I have the same number of pieces of data in L1 as I have in L2. Six X values, six corresponding Y values. Okay. Now, if you look, your stat plot is still on. I don't have to turn that back on. Okay, by the way, notice when you press equals, you see how this is dark? Stat plot one there is darkened. That tells you the plot one is on, right? Second stat plot, stat plot one is on. Y equals stat plot one is on. If you go up here and press enter, you just turn that stat plot off. Watch. Now plot one is off. If I turn this on again and press Y equals, notice that that's darkened again. So you can turn it on and off either way. The new regression, stat, calc, number four, my X values are in L1, my Y values are in L2, my frequency list is blank, 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 make sure it's blank. Store reg EQ always starts blank. You have to actively put that in each time. So let's go alpha F4. Now you remember, I, if you notice, I did not clear out the previous example in L1, and I didn't bother, or in Y1, and I didn't bother with that because I'm gonna put this one right in the same place. And when, the, when I press calculate, the calculator will, will calculate the new regression equation based on the new data, and it will overwrite the equation in, in Y1. It's going to replace it, so I don't need to worry about erasing it. It will take care of that for me. So my regression equation is Y. Why does it do that? Y equals 8.21X minus 37.095. My R value is 0.954. Now notice that my R value is 0.954. Still pretty high, but not as high as the previous example, right? Previous example, like 0.982 or something. 0.985 is still pretty high, but it's not quite as close 
So it's not quite as linear. So finding the R value is fairly simple. Your calculator will do that for you. It's 0.95. Interpret the correlation coefficient R. Um, the data is close to linear, but not as close as it could be. Not as close as we would like. Determine whether a linear equation is a good model for the data. Now this time, I'm going to go back to, I, I, I'm going to um, do a zoom nine again, right? If I do a zoom nine, now the calculator is going to reset its window to show me the data. So here are my data points, okay? 2004, 2006, 2008, 10, 12, 14. Now, notice that the line is fairly close to those data points, but here's something else to notice. Do you notice that these data points on the extreme, down here and up here, are both above the line? And the data points in between are both below the line. If the data on the endpoints are on one side of the line, and the data points in between and the middle are on the other side of the line, that indicates that there might actually be some curving going on here okay so determine whether a linear equation is a good model for the data i might say something like um from 2004 what did we go through 2014 2014 the linear equation is a fairly good notice i'm qualifying that model however the data appears curved so the linear model may not be the best model for this data in the future. Okay, we'll revisit that concept later in the course. Okay, the entire unit two, by the way, this is the last section of unit one. We're talking about linear models, we're kind of pointing ahead. Um, um, the entire next unit will be based on doing regressions looking at a linear regression and a quadratic regression and an exponential regression and, and various regression models based on the data that we see. Um, so more interpretation of this will come. For the coming test, you won't need to do more than what I'm doing in this section. Okay. Now, use the regression model to predict Amazon's revenue in 2020. In the previous example, I said you could just go right back to your, to your home screen, right? Put 20 in for X, 8.21 times 20, minus 37.095. You can do that. Okay. You could go on here. Make sure that your window, that your X max goes past 20. Second calc, the value when X is 20. 127.5. Billion dollars would be my prediction. Now, another option on the calculator is say you go to the table. See where it says table? Second table and find where X is 20, 127.19. Okay, you can find it the same way. Okay. So it's at this point that I typically look at a class and say, Does anybody have any questions? Um, I'm not hearing any. That is linear regression. Okay, that is the end of uh, unit one. Make sure that you do the practice that I've assigned in WebAssign. Okay, again, not just for the grade, but also for the practice and building the skill. There's also in WebAssign an assignment number six, which is a review of unit one. I am not planning to do a uh, video um, that is reviewing the unit. I also, I often find it curious when students, we get to the end of the unit, we get to an end of course and students say, well, aren't we gonna review for the test? Aren't we gonna review for the exam? And one of the sarcastic answers I tend to give students is, what do you think I've been doing all unit? What do you think I've been doing all course, preparing you for that, for that exam, for that final exam? 
So um, this week, you should be working on this, this um, section, linear regression. Um, there's not a second video to go along with the review. Uh, there is an assignment, a practice assignment in WebAssign. I suggest that you do that. Um, and then following that, we will have test number one. Make sure that you are paying attention to the announcements from Blackboard. Um, the test will post within Blackboard. It's my expectation that you will print the test. You'll do the work on your test. You'll use a phone or some type of device to upload a PDF of the test back up into Blackboard so that I can take that and write on it. Please understand your upload must be a PDF. I recommend if you're going to use a phone to upload it. Some of you might have access to a scanner. You might have access to a copier that will scan. Feel free to do that. Um, don't need to do that if you have a phone. If you have someone around you that has a smartphone, um, please don't use the PDF creator that's built into the iPhone. It will not do what I need you to do. Um, use an app such as Adobe Scan. Adobe Scan is the one that I recommend. Adobe Scan uh, is the one that I recommend because it's very user friendly and you can create a multi page PDF and you can just send me, upload to me the entire PDF. I did post a non graded quote unquote assignment into Blackboard so that you can practice that ahead of time before it's the high stakes test. Um, um, so make sure you're doing that. Print the test, write on it, upload it using Adobe Scan or some similar program, send it back to me um, and I will grade that. Some of you may be fortunate enough that you have a device similar to the one that I'm working on here that is touchscreen. If you can open up the PDF and you can then write right on your computer tablet um, um, PDF, save the PDF and just send it right back and do it all electronically, that's even better. I just, I'm not gonna require that at this point. Um, if you do not have printing capabilities, you can't print the test. Oh, no, what do I do? Take out blank paper and do the problem on paper. Just make sure that it follows the format of the test so that I can find problem number one. I can find problem number two. Don't make me hunt for your answers. I will not hunt nearly as much as you would like me to. Okay, so make sure that I can find um, what's going on there. If you have questions, please email me. Um, questions about the format of the test, the Adobe scan, uploading the PDF, whatever, go ahead and email me. But like I said, if you can't print, don't worry about it. Do work on another piece of paper, upload that, um, and send it back. So, again, questions, email me, come to office hours, um, and make sure you're studying for that test and preparing for that test. Uh, the test, one last, one last thing I'll say about the test is that um, the test will be in Blackboard. You will have the entire week of uh, February 15th through the 19th to work on that test. However, once you start it, the clock will run and you will have an hour and a half to finish it. So make sure that you set around, you set aside a 90 minute block of time to work on that test. Because if you start it at five o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon at 630 Tuesday afternoon, you're done. OK, so just just make sure that you're keeping up. Um, with that. All right. Best of luck. And like I said, if you have questions, email me, drop in office hours and uh, we'll talk soon.